We need safe schools because twelveies still use gay as an insult. Do you white, cisgendered, heterosexual old men have any clue what it is like to try to discuss SAGV stuff with your parents while you're in the closet? We just want to make sure the parents know what their kid is being exposed to by safe schools. Like, no. Safe Schools is a taxpayer-funded program aimed at helping lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and or intersex school students. Labor rolled out Safe Schools to do something about the terrifying bullying and discrimination faced by LGBTI kids. Well, I can't see why the government would request an investigation into this program. After all, rabid third-wave feminist Clementine Ford has declared it's, quote, fucking fine, and we can tell she's an unbiased source from this photo of her with the director from the program. Now there's been a few issues raised with the program. Apparently it's been criticised for raising inappropriate sexual issues with children. Well that can't be right, we've been told time and time again that this is just an anti-bullying program. Why would there be anything like that in there? Surely there couldn't be anything radical or inappropriate about this. So let's take a closer look at Safe Schools. I've downloaded their unit guide and I think we'll start by going through that and you'll get an idea of what it is we're teaching in Australia. Hopefully we'll see that this is just a program designed to stop bullying and we can put this whole thing to rest. Now the unit in question is called All of Us. It's for years 7 and 8 which means it will be taught to kids as young as 11. Why teach topics of gender diversity, sexual diversity and intersex? Huh. This doesn't just seem like an anti-bullying program. This seems sort of similar to gender studies in a way. They hope to provide your kids with everything from knowledge of LGBTI identities to the skills to evaluate and critique the progress of their class in collectively affecting social progress. Turning kids into political activists, I don't see what could go wrong there. That is a good idea. Moving on, we have some steps. Number one, establishing a safe space. Hmm. Well, hopefully nothing goes wrong this time. Number two, same-sex attracted experiences, and it looks like they'll be watching videos as they go along. Number three, bisexual experiences. Number four, transgender experiences. Number five, intersex experiences. Number six, what can I do? Create a definition of an ally. You know, the more I read this, the more I get the feeling there's something about the language, something that's awfully familiar. It's characteristic of a certain ideology. Speaking of language, let's go down to this section labelled Modelling Correct Language Use. Well, that doesn't sound Orwellian at all. When discussing topics such as sexuality, gender, diversity and intersex, it is important to model the correct use of terms. For example, it is okay to refer to people in the video series as gay, if that is how they themselves have defined their sexuality. This is a positive use of the word. However, referring to something that is broken or boring as gay is insulting and therefore is not acceptable. This all comes back to being a good ally, which is totally not a demeaning word used by SJWs that comes from a place of resentment. And you need to be a good ally, not a bad ally. Clearly, I've been doing this all wrong. I thought I was progressive. But it's not enough for me to just be pro-gay marriage and opposed to real oppression faced by LGBT people. <laughs> I need to dedicate my life to my LGBT overlords. I need to be a good little ally. Kids will sign an allies pledge because we all need to be allies and we all need to stand out. And by stand out, they mean police other people's language because everyone loves a person like that. They are fun to be around. Somebody just told a politically incorrect joke. Somebody just used a no, no word. Time for the ally to educate all of us shitlords about our wrong speak. You know, I'm tired of people making jokes about blonde hair being associated with intelligence. As a blonde haired person myself, I need society to cater to me. I need all of you allies to go forth and stop people from making jokes about blonde hair. And you other blondes who would tell me to go fuck myself, your opinion is invalid. You're all just traitors because your rights end where my feelings begin. Which is why it's really important that you adjust your language. Where possible, avoid using gendered terms. For example, use words like workforce instead of manpower and police officer instead of policeman. Phrases like ladies and gentlemen or boys and girls should be avoided. In fact, even asking new parents whether their baby is a boy or a girl is not okay. Phrases like congratulations, it's a boy have to go. Now you can say congratulations, it's a baby of some sort. 
and you have to wait until the baby's old enough to identify itself and then ask for its preferred pronouns, otherwise you might be misgendering it. So aside from ally, there's a whole bunch of fun words they're going to teach kids like heteronormativity, because the kids need to learn that just because the vast majority of people are heterosexual doesn't mean that heterosexuality constitutes a norm. Here's one of the more controversial activities that's been brought up in the media. Because of this, you've had people accusing the LGBT activists responsible for the program of crossing the line and sexualizing children and that sort of thing. Invite students to imagine themselves in the role of a young person who is aged 16 years or older and is going out with someone that they are really into. Basically, half the kids at a role play as an older person in a gay relationship and the other half a straight one. There's also another section instructing teachers to inquire about students' genitals, asking them what it would mean if they were to lose that part of themselves. So this is obviously something that not all parents were going to be okay with, but there are other things that I've barely even seen brought up, like this definition of gender that they're teaching. Building blocks of identity. Gender. Gender identity. We each have our own unique identity or way we think and feel about ourselves. This might include being Australian, our family's cultural background, as well as the city, town or state we live in. There are three in particular that help us build our identity. The sex we were assigned at birth, our gender identity, or our sexual identity. Gender isn't quite as simple as whether you're male or female. Everyone has their own gender identity in relation to masculinity and femininity. Some identify with both, and some don't identify with either. It's up to the individual to describe what gender identity fits them best. There are a whole range of different words people use to describe their gender identity. Here are just a few examples. So let's take a look at these. We see some familiar ones. Male, female, I'm guessing these are the ones that are simply assigned when you're born. Trans guy, trans girl. The middle section's the most interesting here. Gender neutral. Androgynous, gender queer, non-binary, agender, all genders. According to the glossary, under gender diverse, a person may identify as neither female nor male, or as both. You can identify as some superhuman male-female hybrid, or no gender at all. You have transcended gender in reality. It's all part of being non-binary. How about all genders, otherwise known as pangender? Not only can you be more than one gender, you can just be all of them. All the fucking genders. Why not? And remember, these are just a few examples. There are new genders being made up all the time, so that's quite a commitment. In fact, there are an infinite amount of genders, confirmed by non-binary org. Pangender is a non-binary gender experience, which refers to a wide multiplicity of genders that contend to the infinite. It's like having a lifetime subscription to every gender that'll ever be made. In fact, you don't even need to know about a gender to identify as it. Well, with all these genders that are totally 100% valid, we're going to need to make some serious adjustments to public toilets. I mean, there aren't just two genders. We need to make toilets for every one of these special and beautiful genders. Toilet blocks are going to be like fucking skyscrapers. You might be gender fluid, someone who moves between genders. You know, you're something different every day, like Martin Morning. There's flower gender, a gendered feeling that is stronger in the daytime and weaker at night. All these genders have their own flags, by the way, so you know they're legit. Lunar gender, a fluid gender that changes in a predictable cycle or in regular phases, like phases of the moon, may be used as a standalone turn or as lunar girl, lunar boy, etc. Loku gender, a fluid gender that changes based on location. Imps, imps gender, a gender that flips or changes rapidly and impulsively, often too quickly to be traced. You call them sir and they'll madly tell you, sir was my preferred pronoun five seconds ago, now it's Sephiroth. And in case you're wondering, yes, the good people at safe schools really assert that fluid genders are a thing. You can read all about it in their booklet, OMG, my friend's queer, because they're in touch with the kids, kids really like their OMGs. Have you considered that you might be a demigirl, someone partly girl, and something else, without defining that other part? You can be just about anything. Be creative. The possibilities are endless. I have a mummy and daddy, a, a adopted mummy and daddy, who are totally comfortable with me being a little girl. And Is this an African-American woman? Or is that a Caucasian woman? I identify as black. Um, my gender identity is still Japanese. I sexually identify as an attack helicopter. Now, of course, that last one's a joke, but the saddest thing, the saddest thing is it's no more ridiculous than everything else I've just shown you. You can't parody this. You can't get more ridiculous than multiple genders, fluid genders, non-binary, all genders. These are made up terms they've invented. 
This is what SJWs do. They create their own language and expect everyone else to know what the fuck they're talking about and to adopt their bullshit concepts. There's no evidence for these things in reality. They push these by butchering and manipulating language to validate insanity. Male and female, what do these things mean? They're not physical things, they have no purpose. These aren't components for reproduction across evolution. These have nothing to do with biology, sexual dimorphism. Fuck science, it's irrelevant. Male and female, these are just vague concepts like names or auras, right? They're no more valid than our made up genders. And you'll notice they go out of their way to use gender instead of sex. However, if we go to Oxford Dictionary and look up the word gender, we see the state of being male or female. Uh oh. The members of one or other sex. Excuse me, there are many others and gender is different to sex. Well, these cis pigs just don't get it. And there are too many people defining gender as biological sex or just not using gender at all. All these different definitions are problematic. This one here though, this is the right one. Yeah, the only one. This definition is gender as a social construct. And to find out why it's the right one, we need to learn where it came from. So where did their definition come from? Well, if you were to go to Wikipedia, you'll find a certain man referenced. Sexologist John Money introduced the terminological distinction between biological sex and gender as a role in 1955. Before his work, it was uncommon to use the word gender to refer to anything other than grammatical categories. However, Money's meaning of the word did not become widespread until the 1970s, when feminist theory embraced the concept of a distinction between biological sex and the social construct of gender. Today the distinction is followed strictly in some contexts, especially the social sciences. Hmm. So who was this John Money guy? Well, if you've seen Tumblrism Cis Scum, then you'll know exactly what it is we're going to find out about John Money. Well, if you were to, I don't know, take a moment to look him up on Wikipedia, you might uh, find a, a strange little link going to somebody called David Raymer? I don't know who that is. It must not be somebody important. Uh, maybe that's somebody John Money helped, right? I mean, I mean, he's somehow connected to John Money. Let's, I don't know, let's just take a look. What the hell? Uh, David Raymer, 1965 to 2004? Oh, he's dead. Oh, well, well let's, let's get whatever. Was a Canadian man, born as a healthy male, but was sexually reassigned and raised uh, as female after his penis was accidentally destroyed during circumcision. That's a bit rough. Uh, psychologist John Money, oh, here's the connection, oversaw the case and reported the reassignment as successful and as evidenced that gender identity is primarily learned. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. So he used this as a foundational piece for his, his ideology, his philosophy. I, I guess this must have turned out well for David. I mean, here's John Money, the, the person responsible for putting this idea out there, and here's a case where a boy is you know, disfigured, but you know, John's like, hey, it's okay, we'll just cut the rest of it off and give you some hormone pills, call you Susie, and you'll be fine. Oh, wait a second, though. What, is this, what does this say? Academic sexologist Milton Diamond later reported that Raymer failed to identify as a female since the ages of 9 to 11, and then began living as a male at age 15. Uh, severe depression, committed suicide, financially unstable, troubled marriage. Huh, sounds like everything worked out well for him. Oh, you know, except for that whole suicide thing. But I, uh, you can't blame that on Dr. Money. I, let's, let's, he'd probably handle this with the utmost care. Oh, what is this? Uh, Dr. Money forced the twins to rehearse sexual uh, acts involving thrusting movements, with David playing the bottom role. David Raymer uh, painfully recalled that as a child, he had to get down on all fours with his brother, Brian Raymer, up behind his butt, with his crotch pressed against his buttocks. Dr. Money forced David in another sexual position to have his legs spread with Brian on top. Dr. Money also forced the children to take their clothes off and engage in genital inspections, and on at least one occasion took photographs of the two children during these activities. And just in case you thought this sick individual, who was responsible for the tortured life and eventual suicide of this kid, couldn't be any more disgusting, Money held the view that so-called affectional pedophilia is caused by a surplus of parental love that became erotic, and is not a behavioural disorder. Rather, he took the position that heterosexuality is another example of a societal and therefore superficial ideological concept. Fucking hell. So here we have a pedophile, a child molester, a failure who set out to prove that gender was a social construct and ended up proving that gender is in fact not a social construct when his test subject failed to be fooled into thinking he was a member of the opposite sex and killed himself. And on top of all that, John Money tried to use this case as proof of his theory, meaning the entire basis for the idea that gender is a social construct 
relies on an omission of the facts. In fact, it relies on outright lies. So let's just recap here. This deranged pedophile, John Money, and his failed experiment, which cost a kid his life, are the origin and justification for this definition of gender that they're teaching kids in this program. Teaching baseless agenda-driven bullshit to kids and justifying it by saying it's to stop bullying towards LGBT children is exactly the same as suggesting we teach all kids Christianity in order to stop bullying against Christian children. It's fucking absurd. Christianity is something to be debated, just as this crap is. But there can be no debate, because these people speak for the LGBT community, and to criticise them is to literally beat up gay and trans people because all of them agree with these ideas. I think all these identities are largely bullshit. I think they're super arbitrary. I think they're super meaningless. Non-binary, gender fluid, gender queer, none of them have any evidence backing them, pointing towards their validity whatsoever. Transgenderism, on the other hand, is neurologically observable. Gender dysphoria is medically diagnosable. Like the phonetics of transgender is transitional sex. You're it, transitioning. For me, it always, I always thought it was transitioning. Yeah, right, it's trans it, it literally means transitional sex. You're transitioning from one sex to the other. So again, it's like you get these nutbags with their non-gender binary shit, and then they say they're trans, and be like, what are you transitioning to? A black hole? Whether it's comic books, whether it's video games, whether it's the gay community, whatever, they just go in, they squat, and they just bring their PC bullshit fucking culture, and they never shut the fuck up. And they're so goddamn loud that people think that that's the majority of the community. So those are just some people whose views I find very interesting and worthwhile listening to, and who don't exactly match the safe school's narrative. But what I want you to take away from these clips is that identifying as these made-up genders is not at all the same as being trans, and that what's being pushed here is a very extreme ideology that deserves to be mocked and ridiculed. Calling for use of bullshit pronouns like Z, giving out ally missions, calling people cis, we don't need a bullshit word for people without gender dysphoria. I'll stick with normal, thanks. It's like Tumblr got a hold of our education system, and it really should be incredibly obvious that there are not a million different genders, because of the simple fact that you cannot prove your made-up gender exists. I can easily prove that male and female exist. Here. These are chromosomes, and what we're looking at here is a pair of sex chromosomes. The presence of a Y sex chromosome indicates that this is a male. The Y chromosome dictates your development as a male. So if you're a male, this is you. If you're a female, this is you. Now some idiots bring up genetic disorders as if these constitute unique genders other than male or female. Number one, these are the result of an error in cell division and a person not receiving the correct genetic material. And the way to objectively and medically assess whether these are male or female is by looking for the presence of a Y chromosome. Again, these are not whole new genders. These are genetic disorders, abnormalities that are extremely rare and come with a range of medical problems such as infertility, deformities, and learning disabilities. Number two, you cannot identify as a genetic disorder. You don't have Down syndrome. You can't identify as someone with Down syndrome. Anyway, back to safe schools. With all their colourful content, I bet you're wondering who are the people behind this program? You've already met the director and photographer, Margot Fink. Activist, photographer, designer, gamer, film geek, ramen aficionado. No matter what, your gender is valid and no one can define that or decide that for you. That's her. Micah Scott, who's also an activist of sorts, you can see an example of his writing in this article. Bioware's first gay character. And that's about all it says, nothing about the character's personality, what he plays like, just that he's a gay character. There's little information on most of these people, there's rumours some of them have deleted their Facebooks and such, but by far the most interesting here is a person by the name of Roz Ward. She's an activist too, let's take a look at some of her Facebook posts. We have Stand with Palestine, and here we see a Palestinian rock thrower about to throw some rocks at Jews, which I understand is the progressive thing to do. Uh, no to Islamophobia, apparently anti-terror laws are Islamophobic. So it looks to be a fan of Islam, uh, come down to Burke Street and show fascists they're not welcome. Hey, why are the protesters you're with dressed like violent thugs, with face coverings and all? Like, it's almost like they intend to commit crimes. Oh wait, this is the same group of protesters who throw horse shit, attack police horses, and continuously cause property damage. In this particular protest, they ended up disobeying and attacking police until their protest got so out of hand, police were forced to use pepper spray on them. Such valuable contributors to our society. What else have we got? Last chance to get 10% off the price of a Marxism conference ticket. A Marxism conference? Well, that would explain the support of violence, particularly towards police. 
If you were to look at this conference, you'll see talks about how crime is a social construct and not that bad because the current Australian way of life is so evil. We need to smash the current systems and destroy society as we know it because Marxism is love, Marxism is life. In fact, it turns out Ros Ward was one of the speakers at last year's Marxism conference as well as the year before. She's also a red flag and Marxist left review contributor. I couldn't make this shit up. I'm going to play you some clips from her talk last year and hopefully that'll give us some insight into her mindset while working on the Safe Schools program. LGBTI oppression and heteronormativity are woven into the fabric of capitalism. Almost every single structure in society is set up to accommodate only two possible genders, male or female. Everything from the toilets we use, the school uniforms, changing rooms, everything is divided into these two limited gender options. So this push to fit people into these physical and social gender constructs that promote heterosexuality is still incredibly strong and reinforced through the judicial system, through the medical, uh, you know, all of medicine, the media and all um, social institutions. Well, I'm sure we can all learn a lot from this person. So far it looks like capitalism is making us think that heterosexuality is normal. It's not normal. And there's also a conspiracy to cover up all these made up genders, even in medicine. I'm sure medical evidence exists, but they just, they don't want us to know. Because capitalism. Marxism provides us with a series of ideas and theory that is central to the struggle for LGBTI liberation. It is central. For her, Marxism is central to LGBT rights. So does that mean that her work in safe schools is essentially part of her Marxist ideology? Well, that would be wonderful. We need some neo-Marxism in our schools. Let's keep listening. To smooth the operation of capitalism, the ruling class has benefited and continues to benefit from oppressing our bodies, relationships, sexuality and gender identities. To make us accept the status quo and for us to keep living or <laughs> aspiring to live or feel like we should live in small social units and families where we must reproduce and take responsibility for those people in those units. I'm with you, comrade. Fuck families. Fuck reproducing and continuing on the human race. That's not something us humans should do. That's not admirable or important in any way. It's capitalism that's making people do this. For those of you who find value in raising a family, having children that you love and watching them grow, that's capitalism holding you down, man. It is evil. Even this family of meerkats has been brainwashed by capitalism. Clearly this capitalism needs to be destroyed. I mean, it's not like this Ros Ward is a fucking lunatic who should never be involved in our children's schooling. This is someone with a massive chip on their shoulder. These are people seeking to gain some level of control over the next generation with this highly ideological program. It's pretty obvious what they're doing. They're trying to push gender studies into the curriculum by packaging it as something else, claiming it's about empathy and tolerance. They say it's only to stop bullying. But what do they do? They make it about controlling language and pushing their ideology on kids. They bring along these bizarre ideas like heteronormativity and their own version of gender. They try to shove this shit down everyone's collective throat and if you object, you hate gay people. You want to see them bullied. Of course, much of the opposition to this program in the media comes from Christians. And this is not a good thing because they argue from a religious point of view rather than a logical one. And people like me see this and think, well, it's just right wing Christian conservatives being homophobic. And unlike me, those people will never look into it further because this is just an anti-bullying program, remember? That's all it is. And some of this stuff here is perfectly okay, like this activity here. Hiding your teeth while talking to a partner. This is fine. It's fucking retarded, but it's fine. They could easily avoid controversy by making this an actual anti-bullying program, which I would support. They could easily remove this other bullshit, but they won't do that because these are agenda-driven political activists who can't help but inject their ideology into everything that they do. These people do not care about anything other than their ideas being enforced. They've ruined academia, they've ruined colleges and universities, and they'll ruin public schools too if you let them. And it looks like we will let them. If the review turns up nothing, Safe Schools is to be rolled out to all state schools by the end of 2018 when you can look forward to seeing more of the outstanding members of society shaped by this pseudo-intellectual propaganda characteristic of subjects like gender studies now in Australia's public schools.